All right, biology students, we are continuing on with our cells unit, and today we are focusing on the cell membrane. Now, the cell membrane is not new to you. We have already discussed it in this unit as an organelle, um, but we're going to dig a little deeper today, and we are going to learn what components make up the cell membrane and what exactly it does within the cell. All right, so remember, the cell membrane is also known as the plasma membrane, and it is a structure or organelle that surrounds all cells. So it's found in both prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. And the cell membrane has many different roles. So one of those roles is it protects the cell from its surroundings. Um, it also helps to maintain an internal environment that's different from its external environment. And it also helps determine which particles can enter and leave the cell. And all of those different jobs that the cell membrane performs helps the cell to maintain homeostasis or a stable internal condition. Now today we're going to talk about four different parts of the cell membrane and one of those parts is going to be the phospholipid. Um, so before we jump into that, I want to just introduce what a phospholipid is. So um, if you notice, the phospholipid illustration here on your screen has two parts. So we have the hydrophilic head, which is a polar molecule that, um, if you'll remember from unit one, hydro means water, philip means loving, so it likes water. And then we have two hydrophobic tails or water-fearing nonpolar molecules. Now, um, the structure of the cell membrane. This is what it looks like. So together, these phospholipids kind of line up in two layers. So we call this the phospholipid bilayer. And if you'll notice, the hydrophilic heads face the water. The hydrophobic tails are away from the water. Um, and so this arrangement is going to help keep molecules from passing through too easily. So it's just a double layer of protection for the cell uh, that helps regulate what comes in and out of the cell so that the cell can maintain homeostasis. Now the phospholipid bilayer is also known as the fluid mosaic model. So where does this come from? Well, fluid means not solid. It can move around. And the term mosaic means made of different parts. So you can see here in this picture, the cell membrane is made of many different parts. And then um, one of the key characteristics of the cell membrane is it is fluid, it's flexible, it can move around very easily uh, because things are gonna have to fit in and out or move in and out of the um, cell through the cell membrane. So it has to be fluid, it has to be flexible. Uh, the fluid mo mosaic model was actually developed in 1972, and although this model has evolved over time, it still provides a really good basic description of the structure and behavior of the plasma membrane. So although this picture shows we've got a lot going on, a lot of components to the cell membrane, uh, for this particular lesson, we're going to only focus on the four key components. So what are those four key components? Well, we've got phospholipids, which we've already talked about a little bit. You also have proteins, uh, carbohydrates, and cholesterol. So we're going to walk through and talk about what each of these components do for the cell membrane. All right, so I'm going to start with the phospholipids. These, again, are the main component of the cell membrane. They come together to form the phospholipid bilayer, and they are protection um, or a protection for the cell. Um, you also have cholesterols, which in this image is going to be this reddish color uh, structure. So despite what you think you might know about cholesterols from like pharmaceutical ads, cholesterols are not all bad. They are actually really, really important. Um, so cholesterols help the cell membrane to maintain appropriate levels of fluidity, and they do that by managing the space between the phospholipids. So if you'll notice here at the picture on the screen, you've got a cholesterol, cholesterol that's in between two phospholipids, and what that does is it just helps provide some fluidity um, in the cell membrane so that it's flexible and it can move very easily. You also have proteins in the cell, which in our picture in the cell membrane, 
um, which in our picture is this bluish structure. So proteins are embedded in the cell membrane and they are used mainly for transport uh, for molecules um, that need to move in and out of the cell. Uh, so certain molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide can just easily squeeze through the cell membrane without any sort of assistance or accommodations. But there are some molecules that can't just sneak through. Um, and those are going to be like our large charged particles. They're going to have to have the help of specialized proteins to assist them. So we're going to talk about in our next lesson some of those proteins and what they do. But for now, you just need to know that proteins are embedded in the cell membrane and they're going to help molecules move across the cell membrane. You also have um, carbohydrates. So carbohydrates in this illustration are this, these green structures. Um, and there are carbohydrates within the cell membrane that help to identify the cell as belonging to the actual organism or not. Uh, and you can have different kinds. So you can have glycoproteins that are carbohydrates that attach to the proteins in the cell membrane. Or you can have what we see here, um, which is called a glycolipid, uh, and it attaches to the actual phospholipid. Um, now, both the glycolipid and the glycoproteins are going to assist in identification and cell signaling, uh, which is very similar to like an ID badge that allows cells to recognize one another. Um, in real life, these carbohydrates are really important in the immune system, uh, allowing immune cells to differentiate between body cells, which um, they shouldn't attack, and foreign cells, which they would want to attack. Now, the last thing I want to point out about the cell membrane is it is selectively permeable, which means some things can pass through, some things cannot. So that's just an adjective that we use to describe the cell membrane, selectively permeable. Um, and you can see here from the illustration, some things are going to be able to pass right through the cell membrane, no help needed. Um, and we'll talk about in some of the activities and things that we do in class together. We'll talk about some of those particular molecules. And then other larger polar molecules um, or nonpolar molecules are going to be able to um, use carrier proteins to pass through or transport proteins to pass through. Um, and so you can see here how the cell membrane allows some things to pass through, others not to pass through um, as easily. And so we'll be talking about those specific molecules in future activities and lessons and labs and things like that. All right, that ends our lesson over the cell membrane today, and I will see you in the next lesson.